Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Today I want to discuss a few things that can cause problems with focus, especially those pesky intermittent problems that crop up from time to time. I mean, we've all been there before. You're shooting away at your subject, and when you check focus, you find that it's not very consistent, and maybe it leaves you scratching your head as to why. So I compiled a list of what I feel are the eight most common problems for focus and AF issues. Also, please note that in some cases, these are tips that are simply kind of meant to point you in the right direction, not give you hours of detailed info on each topic. So let's go ahead and take a look. Number one, the lens needs calibrated. Most modern DSLRs allow you to fine tune your lenses for better accuracy. What happens is that sometimes you get a lens that consistently front focuses or back focuses with your particular camera body. This calibration process allows you to correct that issue on a lens by lens basis. For example, let's say you're looking through your images and you find that when you have your 300 millimeter lens attached, the camera is consistently focusing in front of where you expect it to. For instance, maybe you're using single point AF and trying to focus on the eye of an animal, but instead you find that in every frame the camera is consistently focusing just in front of that area and the eyes are never quite sharp. If that's happening to you, there's a good chance that you simply need to calibrate your lens to your camera using your camera's AF fine tune or AF micro adjust feature. Now, there are a number of different systems out there to help you dial in your lenses. I use a product called Lens Align, but another one is called Focal, and that's a very popular option. However, neither of these are free. One method that is free is called the Dot Tune method, and it's actually quite ingenious. I didn't come up with it, so I'll put a link in the description area on YouTube for this video that explains the technique. That way you get your info from the expert, not just me parroting what he says. This is often all it takes to go from a lens that it just never quite seems sharp to one that's actually very impressive. Again, this particular tip is for consistent AF front or back focus with a particular lens, not erratic or random focus problems. We're going to look at the causes for those as we go along. Number two, the AF sensors are dirty. If you find your camera seems to have become inconsistent or unreliable with its autofocus, it may be time to clean your AF sensors. I know, when it comes to cleaning your camera sensors, most people only think of the main imaging sensor, but you also have a group of AF sensors right under your mirror. If they get dusty or dirty, it can definitely cause problems with autofocus consistency, especially in low light or with lower contrast subjects. I actually had this problem recently on my D7200, and I was able to quickly clear it up using the simple method I'm about to show you. So the first thing you'll want to do is put a fully charged battery in your camera and set your camera into sensor cleaning mode just like you were going to clean your imaging sensor. Now, I don't recommend just mirror up mode since most cameras will trigger the shutter and drop the mirror after a certain amount of time has passed and you sure don't want to have your blower tip in there when it happens. So use the cleaning option under your camera's menus. Now, once the mirror is up, take something like a rocket blower and shoot some air at the area that sits under the mirror. Obviously, be careful not to touch anything in there with that blower. While you're in there, it's probably a good idea to also go ahead and blow off the imaging sensor as well. I usually just clean both areas at the same time since I'm stirring up dust anyway. You'd be surprised how often this simple procedure can improve your autofocus performance, so it's definitely worth a try if you're having problems. Number three, the wrong AF mode is selected. Another really common problem that causes people to suffer from inconsistent focus is simply not having the proper AF mode selected for what they are shooting. For instance, I was recently on a trip and was talking to someone who couldn't quite figure out why they weren't getting sharp action shots. Turns out their AF mode was set to single instead of continuous AF. Single shot mode is never going to work for tracking subjects, and once I pointed out how single works compared to continuous AF, they were much happier. Same goes for AF areas. You really need to understand how those work. For instance, I love Nikon's Group AF, however, I also know that it's a tough AF mode to use when I want to focus on a very small specific area, like an eye for instance. In that case, single point AF is a much better choice. So it's a really good idea to go through and make sure you completely understand what all of your camera's different AF modes do and how they work. And by the way, if you're a Nikon shooter, make sure you check out my video on Nikon AF modes. It covers everything you need to know and has helped a lot of people figure out why they weren't getting consistently sharp images. I'll link it here in the video and in the YouTube description. For my non-Nikon friends, I'd recommend trying to find a similar AF modes video for your brand of camera, or at the very least, really looking over the instruction manual for your camera's AF modes, or maybe even looking at a good third-party book to help get them sorted out. Number four, the AF point outline is off. So, you know those little AF point outlines you see in your viewfinder? I have some bad news. 
Those aren't exact. They are just meant to be a guide. Sometimes the AF point is smaller than what's indicated in the viewfinder. Sometimes it's larger. Sometimes it's not even exactly or completely within the little rectangle. So if you are trying for a critical pinpoint location using the guides, keep in mind that you may have potential for a little inconsistency there. Again, this of course depends on the camera. Now, if you'd like to test your camera and get a rough approximation of the real locations of your AF sensors compared to your viewfinder guide brackets, there is a simple way to do it. Start with a sheet of blank paper and put some kind of pattern or solid square in the center of it. What you see on your screen is actually what I use, and really it's just a table in a Word document. I'll put a downloadable copy of this in the video description over on YouTube if you want to go ahead and use my target for yourself. Next, hang the target on a wall in a well-lit room. Now put your camera's autofocus into single point mode. Next, Nikon users need to put their cameras into continuous AF mode and Canon users into servo. Now place your AF point on a blank area of the paper next to the center target. Since there's no contrast, when you try to autofocus, it'll rack the focus back and forth a bit and you should be looking at an out of focus image once it stops. If not, just try again. If you can't get it, you may need plainer, whiter paper if there is such a thing. Next, keeping your autofocus active, slowly move your AF point towards the center and see when the camera actually locks onto it. Go from the right, and then the left, and then the top, and finally the bottom. This will give you a rough idea of both the size and position of the AF point you're testing. Also, don't be too upset if you discover your AF points aren't the exact size and position of the AF guide shown in the viewfinder. Most of the time, they actually aren't. For example, the center point in my DA10 is larger and just slightly left of exact center, but it's really not that big of a deal. In my opinion, as long as things are reasonably close, I'm just fine with it. If you do discover your AF points are like severely misplaced, then you might want to consider sending the camera in for adjustment. At any rate, just keep in mind that the AF point guides in your viewfinder really are just guides. Number five, you're fighting heat refraction. Another problem that seems to cause headaches, especially for telephoto shooters, is heat distortion and refraction. What is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you've ever looked down a road on a sunny day and saw those heat waves rising from it, you already know an extreme example of what I'm talking about. What happens is the ground is warming the air directly above it, and as that warm air rises and mixes with the cooler air above, there is a difference in air densities. These differences cause the light to refract, and that wreaks havoc with both AF systems and your ability to actually capture a sharp image. Again, this is a bigger problem for folks shooting telephoto lenses, so if you've ever shot wildlife across an open field on a sunny day and couldn't quite figure out why your images weren't as sharp as you thought they should be, this is likely the culprit. It's actually far more common than most people think. The only solution is to move to a location where the area between you and the subject is protected from the sun or reduce the distance between yourself and the subject. I actually talk about this more extensively in my Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography ebook, and I also did a video that goes over it as well. And I'll go ahead and link all that in the YouTube description, and I'll do so here in the video as well so you can find it. Number six, the contacts are dirty. Another potential problem is dirty contacts either in the camera or in the lens itself. When these contacts become dirty, it can interfere with AF function and you may end up with erratic results. Cleaning your contacts is actually pretty easy. I recommend using a quality electrical contact cleaner like Deoxit. I picked up a can of it on Amazon for 13 bucks, and I feel like a bottle of this will probably last me the rest of my life. You can also use isopropyl alcohol, just make sure you get the 99% stuff, not the 70% stuff. Next, you'll need a lint-free microfiber cloth and you're ready to go. Cleaning is actually really easy. Just apply a small amount of the cleaner to the cloth and rub carefully, making sure no excess cleaner drips into the camera or inside your lens. Also, it's a good idea to clean the mounts as well. Some manufacturers use the camera mount itself as an electrical contact, so it helps to clean both the camera mount and the lens mount. But a couple words of caution. First, I've seen where a lot of people recommend using pencil erasers. I do not. They can actually rub the coating from the contacts, not to mention the fact that you don't want a pencil eraser shredding into your camera body. Talk about a mess to clean up. Even if you just used it on the lens contacts, there's still a good chance some of that eraser dust will find its way to your sensor when you mount the lens on the camera. The other cautionary note is to make sure you don't use anything that's not lint-free. Don't use cotton swabs, paper towel, anything like that. Again, you don't want a bunch of excess crud or fibers getting into your gear. Lint-free microfiber is always a good bet. 
Finally, keep in mind that over time and with a lot of use, contacts inside your camera or in the lens can actually become worn. In fact, a few years ago, I actually had to replace a set of contacts on one of my D3X camera bodies, so it does happen. Number seven, poor technique. Another area to look at when you're not getting the sharpness you want is your technique. In many cases, people who are struggling with sharpness are actually struggling with technique. The first thing to figure out when faced with soft images is if what you're seeing is an out-of-focus image or if you're looking at motion blur. If you see motion blur, you know it's likely an issue with your technique. The first place to look is shutter speed. In my experience, people tend to underestimate just how much shutter speed they need. So if you think you have motion blur, try cranking up your shutter speed a notch or two. For example, you may think 1 2 50th of a second is fast enough for anything, but maybe you really need something north of 1 1,000th of a second for your particular subjects. The other side of this coin is that maybe things aren't stable enough on your end. If that's the case, it may be time to look at better stabilization solutions. Maybe a better tripod is in order. I mean, I see tons of tripods in the field that simply aren't very good. If you don't use a tripod, you may want to consider it or consider finding ways to improve your hand-holding technique. Of course, AF placement, proper tracking, and all of those things can affect whether or not you get a sharp image, and frankly, covering every possible scenario is beyond the scope of this little video. But if you are a wildlife photographer, I'd suggest checking out my ebook, Secrets to Studying Wildlife Photography. I have dozens of tips, tricks, and ideas for getting sharper images in there. If you're not a wildlife photographer, I'd highly suggest finding someone who is getting the results you want and asking them what specific techniques they are using for those particular types of photos. If you're struggling, a quick question on a friendly camera form may be all you need to give you some ideas that will help improve your technique. Number eight, tough subject and or the wrong sensor. Another problem is you might just have a tough subject. If you're shooting in low light, low contrast, or both, sometimes the camera just can't get a proper lock. Hey, it happens. I run into this all the time with black bears in low light. Even my newer cameras will sometimes misfocus on what seems like an easy subject. The other side of this is that not all your AF sensors are created equal. Your center AF sensor point is usually going to be the one that's got the most sophisticated technology packed into it. That sensor is likely some variety of a very sensitive cross-type style AF sensor. The AF sensors that are nearby are also usually higher-end AF sensors. However, as you move away from the center towards the edges, you may find that those outlying sensors aren't quite as sensitive or reliable in tricky situations. In many cases, they are not as sensitive to dim light and are only your regular garden variety, non-cross type autofocus sensors. When the light gets dim and the contrast gets low, these are not gonna treat you as well as the more centrally located AF sensors on most cameras. Of course, like I say, it can vary from camera to camera, so it never hurts to check the specs for your particular camera. So if you're having a hard time getting an AF lock, switch to the center AF point and see if that helps. Okay, that about does it. Again, this is by no means what I would call a complete list, but I do think it covers the most common AF and focus issues. If nothing else, hopefully it'll give you some ideas the next time you're faced with some soft images you can't quite explain. Also, if you're into wildlife, I'd love it if you check out my ebook, Secrets to Studying Wildlife Photography. It's 290 pages of everything I know about capturing wildlife images. And like I mentioned just a minute ago, there are tons of sharpness, tricks, and techniques in there as well. Again, I'll put the link for it here in the video and in the YouTube description for this video. As always, it would be great if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, I highly recommend you stop by my website and sign up for my email newsletter. I send it out each time I post a new video on YouTube or a new article at my site. Sign up, and you'll never miss out. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.